enzymes are proteins that catalyze reactions in the body. Digestive enzymes break food down into small, soluble molecules that can be absorbed into the bloodstream. If you eat food like an apple, digestive enzymes help to break it down in your digestive system into small food molecules. These food molecules are then absorbed from the intestines into your bloodstream. So how do these enzymes work to actually produce food molecules? The molecules that enzymes act upon are called substrates. The blue part of this simple diagram represents an enzyme. This part of the enzyme is important. It's called the active site. Floating just above the active site, you can see these red shapes, which represent the substrate. If you have a look at this diagram closely, you'll notice that this part of the substrate is the same shape as the active site on the enzyme. They're complementary to each other. This means that the substrate is able to bind to the enzyme like this. When this happens, the enzyme breaks bonds down within the substrate to produce new molecules from the original substrate molecule. The molecules that enzymes produce are called products. Once the reaction is complete, the products are released from the active site. This means that the enzyme is freed up to go back to the start of the cycle and bond to substrate again. So this is how enzymes work. Now, let's have a look at what the products of digestion are used for. The products of digestion are used to build new carbohydrates, lipids and proteins. Bear in mind that not all enzymes break things down. Synthesis enzymes can build new substances, for example, amino acids being used to build new protein chains. It's important that you're able to relate your knowledge of enzymes to metabolism, that is, the reactions in the body that digest or synthesize different organic compounds like proteins, carbohydrates, and lipids. The lock and key theory explains how enzymes are specific to their substrate, like a key is for a lock. In this simple diagram, this shape represents the substrate, and this one represents the enzyme. The substrate can be thought of like a key and the enzyme like a lock for that key. Only the correctly sized and shaped key fits into the keyhole of the lock. You should be able to use models like this in the exam to explain the action of enzymes. So why is it that enzymes are specific for their substrate? Different enzymes catalyze specific reactions due to the unique shape of their active sites. On the left hand side of this image, you can see digestive enzymes. These break down their substrate. And on this side are synthesis enzymes, which join molecules together. You can see by looking at these diagrams that the active site is complementary to the shape of the substrate. In this animation, you can see that each substrate fits neatly into their complementary active site. It's really important that you understand that the shape of the active site determines what substrates can bind to the enzyme. So what happens if they're not complementary? If the shape of the active site is not complementary to the shape of the substrate, it will not bind. In this example, the active site is not complementary to the substrate. To use the lock and key analogy, this key does not fit the lock, so the enzyme won't attach to the substrate and the reaction will not work. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos, and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here. Or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE Biology course. See you there.